Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is January 27 and our daily review of news about Ukraine. Ukraine managed to return a total of 106 civilians from Russian captivity. That's according to Darina Zarivna, advisor to the head of the president's office, who spoke in an interview with Kiev Post, Ukraineform reports. At this moment, Ukraine has returned 106 civilians, she said. The advisor also explained that, according to international legislation, civilians as non-combatants must be returned to Russia unconditionally, without being used in the process of POW swaps. She said there are cases where Ukrainian journalists find themselves in enemy captivity. Read also, wife of Azov Regiment Commander calls for liberation of Ukrainian soldiers from Russian captivity. We should understand that when a journalist is a civilian, he is considered a hostage, not a POW. He is a non-combatant. According to the Geneva Conventions, Russia must release such people without any condition. However, if a journalist joins the army, the rules of the Geneva Conventions apply to him as a combatant, Zarivna emphasized. As reported, due to the work of the coordination headquarters, 1,646 military servicemen were released from Russian captivity. Illustrative photo Family members of the so-called Second Army Corps, those mobilized from the temporarily occupied areas of Luhansk region, are being transported to the Russian Federation. That's according to the Center of National Resistance, Ukraineform reports. Families of the so-called Second Army Corps of the LPR are being deported to Russia. They are promised benefits and offered accommodation in remote areas of the Russian Federation. In addition, the children of those soldiers receive the right to free education at Russian universities. This, according to the occupier's plan, should motivate the residents of Luhansk region to join the ranks of the enemy army, the statement reads. Read also, support for LPR slash DPR to become financial, political burden for Russia, British intelligence it is noted that in the future these families are supposed to assimilate, and in the meantime, the Russian Federation is resettling own citizens to Luhansk region. Therefore, such migration flows also aim to change the demographic composition of the region. As reported, as of November, 11,461 children are reported as deported from Ukraine. Due to the Russian full-scale invasion, at least 109 large and medium-sized Ukrainian enterprises of various forms of ownership suffered direct losses, estimated at a total of $13 billion. That's according to a research run by Kiev School of Economics, KSE, Ukraineform reports. In 2022, at least 109 large and medium-sized enterprises suffered direct losses as a result of the full-scale invasion launched by Russia on February 24, 2022. The total amount of direct losses of enterprises, including state-owned ones, and entrepreneurs is estimated at $13 billion, of which $9 billion is the share of losses of large and medium-sized enterprises, the report reads. At the same time, total indirect losses reached $33.1 billion. According to the estimates made by the experts with KSE's Russia Will Pay project, $24.9 billion will be needed to restore enterprises. Read also, Russia has caused almost $138 billion in damage to Ukraine's infrastructure. KSE The majority of destroyed and damaged assets are concentrated in six regions, Kiev and Donetsk each 17% of the total, Zaporizhia, 14%, Kharkiv, 13%, Luhansk, 10%, and Mykolaiv, 8%. Elich Mariupol Metallurgical Plant, Azovstal, Nibulin, and Motor Sitch were among the largest enterprises in terms of assets that suffered direct losses as a result of Russia's armed aggression in 2022. According to experts, 19 private and state-owned enterprises, 17%, from among large and medium ones were completely destroyed, while another 90, 83%, were partially damaged. As reported, as of December 2022, Ukrainian infrastructure has suffered war-related direct losses in the amount of $137.8 billion. Since November, the amount has increased by almost $2 billion. Photo, KSE. Since the launch of the United24 platform, 
people from 110 countries have joined the effort, donating more than $274 million. That's according to an exclusive comment to Ukraine Forum by the Ministry of Digital Transformation. A key project that we believe in and that is also changing the course of the war right now is the United24 fundraising platform. This is actually a single window for donations from charitable organizations, international partners, and citizens to support Ukraine. Since May, we have already raised more than $274 million, the report says. The platform has already turned into a convenient tool for supporting Ukraine. The relevant ministries and defense forces, thanks to donations, purchase the necessary equipment for medics, rescuers, as well as the Ukrainian military, which defends our state. Read also, $1 million for mobile intensive care units, Uber becomes new partner of United24 platform football legend Andriy Shevchenko, tennis star Alina Svitolina, iconic actress Barbara Streisand, as well as the Imagine Dragons band, American actor and director Liev Schreiber, NASA astronaut and record holder Scott Kelly have all become United24 ambassadors. As reported, on May 5, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced the launch of the United24 Global Initiative. Its first component is an online platform for raising funds in support of Ukraine. On January 27, at 1400 hours, a briefing will be held on the topic, the Air Force of Ukraine on the front line of the Russo-Ukrainian War. Organizer, Media Center Ukraine, Ukraine Forum. Speaker, Yuri Anat, spokesman for the Air Force Command Main Issues, the Air Force of Ukraine on the front line of the Russo-Ukrainian War, latest update on airstrikes and their aftermath. This is an offline event, Hall 1. Watch on Ukraine Forum's YouTube channel. As the Joint Coordination Center in Istanbul continues its work within the framework of the Black Sea Grain Initiative, a bulk carrier with 16,000 tons of Ukrainian wheat on board, bound for Afghanistan, passed the relevant inspection earlier today. This was announced by the Turkish Defense Ministry on Twitter. Mustarek Coordination Merkizi, Ukraina Tehilinen, Planli v. Emniyetli C. Kilda Sevkiatini, Serdurier. Afghanistan ISIN 16 bin ton bug day Tasian M slash V A N H T I A I Simli Malta Bandarali Geminin Istanbul Zeitin Bernu Asiklarinda Dinetami Jursa Clusterildi dot https forward slash forward slash T dot co slash rat decit zero hashtag MSBP I C dot Twitter dot com slash L F one four Q Z K W I O T C Mili Savanma Bakan Liji at Savanma January 27, 2023 The Joint Coordination Center continues scheduled and safe shipments of Ukrainian grain. The inspection of the m vanhtia flying the flag of Malta, which is transporting 16,000 tons of wheat for Afghanistan, was conducted near Istanbul, in the Zaitan Berna district, the tweet reads. Read also, Ukraine has exported 2.4 m tons of grain in January as Ukraine Forum reported earlier referring to the Ministry of Agrarian Policy and Food of Ukraine, in January, nearly two to three ships per day departed from Ukrainian ports. This is one of the lowest indicators since the grain initiative was launched, which is due to the artificial blocking of the corridor by Russian inspectors. Russian troops are actively shelling the town of Volodar, where seven households and two schools were damaged by the latest barrage. That's according to the chief of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration, Pavlo Kirilenko, Ukraine Forum reports. Active shelling of Volodar continues in the Volnavaka direction, seven households and two schools were damaged in town. On the territory of the community, two people died and one was injured in Bohoyavlenka, shelling of Novokrenka was recorded. In the Donetsk direction, two massive artillery strikes targeted Avdiivka overnight, damage is reported and we are now assessing its extent," the head of the region wrote. He noted that one person was injured in the Horlivka direction and one household's was damaged in Bakhmut. Read also, no offensive preparations in Tavria direction observed Yaren earlier, the Russians damaged three households and a kindergarten in Toritsk, firing at the community. Also, three more households were damaged in Katerinivka of the Ilanivska community, where no casualties were reported. The night was tense in the villages of the Soldar community, stated Kirilenko. 
He added that, in addition, in the Lysikansk direction, the villages of Torsky, Zurich, and Yampil in the Lyman community came under fire, in the Zvanovsk community, three households were damaged in Pariesny, and the outskirts of Zvanivka came under fire as Russia used phosphorus charges. The situation was also tense in Siversk, where shelling continued throughout the day. A household was destroyed by a direct hit. As reported, on January 26, Russian invaders killed six residents of Donetsk region and nine more people were injured in the region. President Volodymyr Zelensky expressed gratitude to the leaders and the entire people of Poland for the decision to provide Ukraine with main battle tanks. The head of state wrote about this on Twitter, Ukrainform reports. Thank you to Andrei Duda, Mateusz Morawiecki, Mariusz Blazak, Jacek Suyera, and the people of Poland for such important decisions to transfer 60 Polish tanks to Ukraine, 30 of which are the famous RT-91 Twardy and 14 Leopard 2s. Just like 160 years ago, we are together, but this time the enemy has no chance. Together, we will win. Zelensky wrote. Read also. Pentagon, USA plans to procure new Abrams tanks for Ukraine as reported, the head of the Polish government, Mateusz Morawiecki, said Warsaw is ready to transfer to Kiev 60 Polish RT-91 tanks, a modernized variant of the T-72, as well as 14 Leopard 2 tanks. Photo, President's Office Near the Donetsk region's Bakhmut, the servicemen of the Ukrainian State Border Guard Service have eliminated a group of Russian infantry soldiers. Additionally, the members of the National Guard of Ukraine destroyed an enemy ammunition depot. The relevant statement was made by the Ukrainian State Border Guard Service on Telegram and Ukrainform correspondent reports. Recently, a combat group of border guards has inflicted fire damage on the enemy infantry with 120mm mortars. According to the preliminary data, our defenders detected the enemy cluster with an unmanned aerial vehicle, the report states. According to the Ukrainian State Border Guard Service, mortar gunners fired 10 high-explosive mortar bombs, having eliminated the entire enemy group. Meanwhile, the National Guard of Ukraine noted on Telegram that the Ukrainian military had destroyed an enemy ammunition depot in the Bakhmut direction. In the Bakhmut direction, the 3rd Operational Brigade of the National Guard of Ukraine, in cooperation with the 44th Separate Artillery Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, detected and destroyed an enemy ammunition depot, the National Guard of Ukraine wrote. The ammunition depot contained, in particular, anti-tank guided missiles, anti-tank mines, rocket-propelled grenades, and small arms ammunition. Photo, Ukrainian State Border Guard Service, Telegram. The United Kingdom has already provided over 200 armored vehicles to Ukraine. The relevant statement was made by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine on Facebook, referring to the Ministry of Defense of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and Ukrainform correspondent reports. The UK was the first European nation to donate lethal aid to Ukraine and we are committed to match or exceed last year's funding in 2023. We have provided over 200 armored vehicles to date. Meet the Husky, Mastiff, Wolfhound, Spartan and Stormer, the Ministry of Defense wrote. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine posted the images of these armored vehicles and expressed gratitude to the United Kingdom for its support and assistance. Today we were talking about those news. Ukraine frees 106 civilians from Russian captivity. Families of LPR Army soldiers being moved to Russia. War-related direct losses of Ukrainian businesses reach $13 billion research. Donors from 110 countries join United24 initiative, raising over $274 million. Briefing, the Air Force of Ukraine on the front line of the Russo-Ukrainian War. Bulker carrying 16,000 T of Ukrainian grain passes inspection in Istanbul. Russian shell Volodar, damaging households, two schools. Zelensky thanks Poland for tanks. Ukrainian forces destroy enemy ammo depot, group of infantry near Bakhmut. United Kingdom provided over 200 armored vehicles to Ukraine.